Guys, it's spooky season, so we've got to read horror. And I got thinking, okay, what fun video can I do around horror? And I, I've come up with an idea. <laughs> spooky, ooky, kooky, and creepy special edition. In my experience, horror is one of the most lowly rated genres. <laughs> People are quite picky with their horror, they tend to rate it quite low, and so I thought it'd be interesting to read the lowest rated horror on my TBR and the highest rated horror on my TBR, and see how much they differ in quality. I feel like horror is an interesting one because it can kind of be rated low, not because a book is necessarily bad, but because people just don't understand the vibe. So, I have found my lowest rated and my highest rated, and we're going to be reading them both in this vlog and seeing are they really that far apart. And let me tell you right now, there's almost a whole star rating of difference, which is quite a lot between these two books. That's quite dramatic. So I'm interested to see what the difference is. So our first book is Pine by Francine Toon. I think this is a bit of like a thriller horror hybrid, but its primary genre is horror. And the best it says a pacey horror tinged novel. Horror tinged. <laughs> but this one we're following these two characters who live in the Scottish Highlands and they stumble across a woman on a road one night and in the morning she's gone. It's about this community, this strange like insular community in a place that feels like the end of the world. The wilderness of rural childhood and the intensity of small town claustrophobia. How exciting. I think it's going to be a bit gothic. I've always loved the cover of this. I love this, what animal is that? Deer? I don't know. I love the way it looks. I think it's such a great cover. And this is now pretty old. It's one of the oldest books on my TBR. So this has a 3.39 average rating, which is pretty low, you know, for something, for example, for to set a baseline in order to be nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards, which is on my brain a lot at the moment. <laughs> We don't need to talk about that. A book has to have above a 3.5. So 3.39, I would say, is lower. 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 is all kind of lower average ratings. And then our highest average rating, you guys, I'm so excited, is Sleuthit by Brom. This has a 4.33 average rating. So like I said, almost a whole star rating of difference, which is quite drastic. And this is the highest rated by quite a while, I think, on my TBR. I've told you guys about this a lot. We're following a demon called Sleuthit. This is set in 1666 aka 666 it's devil season <laughs> and i think this is gonna be witchy it's gonna be dark really dark i want it to get dark i want it to get really dark i think this is gonna be immaculate vibes i'm really really excited so these are the two books we're gonna be reading i'm very excited i think i'm gonna start with pine because i think it would be unfair to start to read this first and then to always compare this to this. I want to see how I how I feel about Pine in its own right because this is like a five star prediction. I mean I gotta stop saying things are five star predictions because every time I say that they get two stars so like shut up Megan. <laughs> but I'm gonna start with Pine. I'll check in with you once I'm a little bit of the way through it but I'm hoping I'm still gonna enjoy this even if it is lowly rated. I wonder what the reasons for rating it low are but I'm excited to get into some horror. Good afternoon, my gorgeous cuties. I am halfway through our lowest rated horror, Pine, and I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm quite enjoying this, but I understand <laughs> it's low rating. So what you need to know about this is that we've got Lauren, who is about 10, um, and her father, who live in this small village in the highlands of Scotland. And the first chapter is her and her friend going trick-or-treating at Halloween. And it really, like, opens up. Something I think it does really well is it opens up with them going, them being driven around to, like, four houses that are nearby. <laughs> because that's all... that Like, it's such a small village that it's kind of, like, organised. Right, we're going to go see this old person and this old person and this old person. And you'll sing them a song and then they'll give you a Mars bar kind of thing. And it really opens up with showing you how isolated this town is and how small their lives are and just like it really sets the tone I think for the rest of the book really well and then on the way home her and her dad come across this woman in the road and they take her home um, to help her out but then the next morning she's gone and her dad doesn't remember that happening and it's kind of going on from there it's kind of like a gothic ghost story I would say I can see why people don't like this but I am really enjoying it it's quiet but nothing's really happening <laughs> it's eerie but nothing's really happening push me up against the wall give me a kiss 
then I might get excited. No, in terms of what I'm enjoying, I am enjoying that quiet and that slow burn. And it's just eerie and creepy and I don't want to spoil anything, but you're starting to figure out who the ghost maybe is and how that's all coming together, as well as answers about Lauren's life is really interesting. Also, you know, Lauren's 10. And so you're kind of like consuming this through her eyes. So consuming the idea of like a ghost story through a kid's eyes, I think is something very powerful and very evocative. Like I was kind of obsessed with ghosts when I was like 10. Not that she is, but like it's an interesting angle. You know, there's like things, she's relating things to her life in a very interesting way. And I haven't read a book like this in a while that does it. It's very subtle. It's not like overbearing, like, oh, this is written by a child. Like you read some books where it's like, misspelt and stuff. They haven't got that. And you know, she's suffering at school. She's very much bullied at school. And just the kind of like, the insight this has into the way kids behave or like the kind of stories that will excite a child or the way a child will try to get attention or anything along those lines, I think is very perceptive. Like it's kind of reminding me of things when I was at school that I'd forgotten about. I think it's very, tuned in to the angle that it's writing from. But at the end of the day, <laughs> nothing is really happening. Like I'm halfway through the book and it's just slow and creepy. And I think how much you enjoy this will really be determined by what your perception of this going into it was, right? If you're expecting like a horror horror, I don't think you'll enjoy it. And also if you're expecting like a thriller, like I think this was Waterstone's thriller of uh, thrill of the month. One month, that's how I found out about it and how I bought it. And I think if you're expecting a thriller, it's not that either. It's a gothic horror. Sorry if you can hear Rora scratching on the bed. <laughs> She's in one of her moods. I think if you're expecting a thriller, it's not really that either. It's eerie. Well, I suppose it's a gothic thriller, but I think you gotta know the gothic part <laughs> to go into it. Rora, we have guests. <laughs> to that's very rude, isn't it? to go into it enjoying it. So I can see why it's slowly rated. I can see, I wonder what is the rating split? I imagine it's rated low because it's a lot of three stars. Let's have a look on Goodreads. Yeah, it's a lot of three stars, quite a lot of four stars as well. Okay, that doesn't surprise me. And that's why it's rated a bit low. I mean, 13% two stars is quite high. It's got like basically the same amount of five stars as it has two stars, which actually doesn't surprise me. But yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm really enjoying it being set in the Highlands in Scotland. I think it's a very interesting community for it to be focusing on. So I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna go carry on reading it. But yeah, I don't think it's for everyone but I am enjoying reading it at this time of year as autumn is setting in, the cold is setting in, and the, it's getting darker. I think this is a good, good time of year to read this. Okay, I haven't read much more, but I have accumulated like the most amount of parcels I think I've ever accumulated in one day today. <laughs> we've got all of these <laughs> and we've got some books that I picked up while I was out today. So let's, I just wanna do a little unboxing with you this evening. I feel like I need the serotonin. <laughs> So some of these are book orders and some of them, we'll start with ones I know are book orders. <laughs> and then some will be makeup and skincare because oh, I think it must be something to do with like getting loads of it at Christmas or my birthday, but all of my skincare and makeup ran out <laughs> at the same time, like scary amount scary amount of it. And I am the kind of person, like I only really have one foundation that I use. I only have like one sun cream, one moisturizer and it all went. <laughs> so I had to make a big purchase. I don't think all of that's arrived. I think the books have arrived, but let's just, let's get into what we've got. So we have got None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I picked this up because it's gonna be nominated for the Goodreads Mystery Story Awards, which I'm gonna be reading. It's, I think this might win. This, Riley Sager, or Stacey Willingham, which isn't very exciting for Stacey Willingham wins. I'm really excited to read this. And then we have A Beach House to Die For, <laughs> which is one of my book club picks for my Costa Rica trip, which is coming up in like two weeks. Less than two weeks, oh my God. <laughs> It hasn't really sunk in. I can't, I can't really believe it's happening. It still doesn't feel real. So yeah, this is one of our book club picks. Nice and short. Um, we've got like a more serious book, which I think will be in one of these other boxes. But this is a more of a, a fun book. Our fun cozy mystery with a cat with a knife. <laughs> So I'm excited to chat about that with everyone. I'll probably read that whilst we're in Costa Rica as well. And then I have also got An Elderly Lady Must Not Be Crossed by Helene Thurston. This is a sequel to An Elderly Lady's Up To No Good. And I got this because maybe I'll be finishing this series soon. It's like tiny. Look how small the, this book is. It's like the smallest book ever. Yeah, the first, I really liked the first one. Um, I have heard this second one isn't as good. 
but I mean, we'll see. Now this I think is just my bookmarks that I ordered so that I'd get free shipping. <laughs> I've already spent the same amount of money that I would have done had I not had free shipping, but I got some bookmarks out of it. You're so clever. Oh my God, you're so clever. I love these ones from Waterstones. This one's got a sloth on it. <laughs> so I got a new one of those and I got, oh, that's cute. I didn't really look too close at the picture. I just clicked on another one. I was like, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> I'll do. Okay, I think then this is my other Waterstones package. Yeah, this is our other Costa Rica book club pick. Where There Was Fire by John Manuel Arias. Again, this isn't too long, which is good. Oh, it's got interesting, it's very interesting feel. It's like grainy paper. Interesting. I also really like the cover. This is set in Costa Rica in 1968. Both the books we're reading are set in Costa Rica. I wanted to read books set in Costa Rica on the trip. So um, yeah, I'm excited to read this and discuss this with everyone as well. Then what is this? Which of my skincare and makeup? Because I placed three different orders. Oh, this is Space NK. I had to place an order on Space NK, Sephora and Boots <laughs> for my different things. Oh, I've got my I think she was just genuinely excited about fucking everything. What did I get? I got the Cordially Serum and a Sunday Riley eye cream as my testers. How exciting. Um, so from Space NK, what did I get? Oh yeah, I got two things. I got my eyebrow pencil, the Anastasia Brow, Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, and I got... Ah, I refuse to ever use another moisturiser again. It's the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. <gasps> I love her. I love her. But my I just ran out of it. And I got it for either Christmas or my birthday. The one that I had just ran out of. So it lasted me like, girl maths, almost a whole year. <laughs> it's not adding up. So I think that's not bad, even though it is expensive. But it's like my one big splurge out of my like, makeup and skincare. Okay, that's all of our parcels. How exciting. Oh my god. And then I did go in. I had to go into town to get a vaccination for Costa Rica today. And I went into the works, which if you don't know, if you're not from the UK, the works is like, kind of like, it has a lot of stuff in it, but they have some books and they have really good deals. They have on some books, three for six pound, which is kind of crazy. But these three I got were all three pounds, three pounds. So I always have a little look in there. I don't always get something. None of these were ones that were like top of my list to get, or even, I don't think any of these are on my wish list, but they're all ones that I've been like moderately intrigued by. So I thought, why well, I shouldn't really have done this because I'm not supposed to be buying books that I don't need, but I did it anyway. I don't think so, I don't think I'm allowed. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, no. I'm not allowed. I know I'm not allowed. So I got Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. I'm not going to tell you anything about these because I don't really know anything about these. <laughs> Just ones that I've seen. And I thought, hmm, that looks okay. Um, yeah, I got Love in the Time of Serial Killers. I got uh, A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon, which you know, looks kind of cute. It's not necessarily always my kind of thing. It looks kind of cute. And I got How to Kill Men and Get Away With It. <laughs> Which is probably more my thing out of all we've got. So yeah, I have more skincare makeup coming, but thank you for unboxing all of those parcels with me today. How exciting is that? I'm gonna go settle down and hopefully finish Pine tonight and I will see you either fine last thing tonight or first thing in the morning with my thoughts on finishing Pine. But I'm, I'm feeling positive about it. I'm quite enjoying it so far. I just miss you more than anything It's way too quiet in the house I'm just wasted on the couch Cause I don't wanna feel anything Wish you'd stay Stay here beside me This isn't how it's supposed to be Wish you'd stay Can't shake that feeling that we said goodbye too soon. I know the hour's getting late. I shouldn't sit here contemplating. 
I finished pine this morning. This is a tricky one. My mum just sneezed so loud. <laughs> My mum, when she sneezes, she goes, Chio! <laughs> Anyways, I finished pine. This is a tricky one because I stayed up till like midnight reading this last night. Granted, I was reading it slowly with the audiobook, so I wasn't reading physically. I was like playing games on my phone <laughs> whilst I listened to the audiobook. But it reaches a point in the second half of this where there is a mystery element. I feel like I've got cat hair on my face. Not go well. There reaches a point in the middle where there's like a mystery element to it, and you're trying to figure out based on a character that not that a character that you care about deeply, but maybe a character where if they were to have done something bad, it would have extreme ramifications to those that you do care about deeply in the book. You think they've done something bad, and so <laughs> I can't even film for a minute without like five interruptions. I have been pushed to the limit with this. Yeah, so that does happen and you really think like, oh god, like this is gonna go in a certain direction and like I really wanted to find out what the truth was and I could not stop reading it. However, by the end, I do understand why <laughs> this has such a low rating. Because you kind of read it and you go, what was the point of all of that? You know, I'm giving it a 3.5. I really enjoyed elements of it, but I, it does feel a little bit, not like there's a lack of resolution at the end because everything is kind of tied up. You have answers for everything, but you kind of feel like, is that enough for a book? You know, I think this could have been stronger as a novella. I think if you cut a hundred pages of this, I don't know, but then again, I don't know. I don't know, it does, it does bulk out what it's doing well, like with how, with how well we get to know characters and kind of spend this slow, quiet time like delving into their psyche and delving into the town. But I think it either needed to be longer or shorter, right? I think it either skimmed on a few bits, like a few characters, like a few of the older girl, the teenage girls that she knew. I feel like we could have known a bit more about them or we needed to scale back the book. I feel like it kind of wasn't quite there, but it is a debut and I feel like the atmosphere of it that is impeccable. You know, the gothic isolated nature in the Scottish Highlands, I could envision everything so well. It was such a different culture and a different kind of lifestyle than I'd read about before. So I think there's a lot of pros about it. I don't think it deserves to be the lowest rated horror. I read worse. I don't think it's, there's a case, sometimes horror that's like a bit experimental can be lowly rated. That isn't the case with this. It's that I think it is a debut that kind of is still working out some of the kinks of like structuring a story but for me there's a lot of pros to this it maybe is even more of like a 3.75 but I'm gonna call it a 3.5 but it's a very interesting is it is a different bit of a different story right your relationship to the characters is a bit different your relationship to the understanding of the plot is a bit different but I did enjoy it so we're now gonna start Sleuthfoot by Brom next I'm gonna go ahead and read some now I'll check in with you maybe one of like 100 pages in I'm hoping for great things from this I'm pretty sure I put this on my five star predictions um early this year so <laughs> no pressure i don't mean to make her nervous that much by the way all my other parcels have just arrived so i thought let's just like unbox them together because apparently this has become an unboxing video i got a parcel that i wasn't expecting but i think it's the second half of another parcel that i got earlier which i don't think i've shown you yet i've been meaning to show you. yes okay so this is the first myrtle <laughs> which is like murder mystery logic puzzles can you see it's like one of these. They sent me a couple days ago, or maybe like a week or so now. Second one in this like, how cool is this? In like an evidence bag um, with like a pencil and like a book, a special bookmark. How cool. So this is the second one. I'm definitely going to take this first one on the plane to Costa Rica because I think this would be a fun thing. The, the plane ride is I think the longest plane ride I've ever been on. It's longer than when I go to Florida. So I think it's like 12 and a half hours. That's the second one as well. So I thank you so much to the publisher of sending me these how cool i'm just keeping it in its little evidence bag like forever because i think it's so 
cool, a fun imaginative way of sending stuff over. But yeah, and I think they get a bit more difficult as it goes on, like they ramp up in difficulty. But there is an online version of these, but I'm more of a book girly. Yeah, I'm really excited. And I think this would be good training for like writing a murder mystery. I don't know, I feel like figuring out layers of mystery is something that would be very helpful. Okay, I have two other parcels. This is all just makeup and skincare that I've run out of that I'm replacing. It's not very exciting. So Sephora, so testers, the most exciting thing. We have got Charlotte Tilbury supermodel body and we have got wishful thirst trap juice. I find testers very exciting. I never end up buying stuff that I got through testers. I ran out of my foundation, which is the Rare Beauty foundation and the shade, if you're intrigued, 150C is the shade that I use. Who cares? Like seriously, go to work. I got, this is my third time maybe even fourth, no, third time purchasing this. This is the Makeup by Mario Moisture Go Lip Pumping Serum. These are similar to like the MAC squirts, if you've seen them, but like you roll them up and they're like a lip gloss. This is in the shade Bronze Glow. I, I love this. I wear it all the time. And then I did purchase, I'd run out of my lip liners. I didn't love them though. I've been using the Rare Beauty ones. They're okay, but also all the shades I like are out of stock everywhere. So I picked up the Huda Beauty lip pencil in the shade Pinky Brown, and I'm very excited to swatch this. Oh yeah, that's very similar to some of my other shades. Okay, that's the kind of color I wanted. Cute! From Boots, what did I get? Oh yeah, this is so exciting guys, isn't it? <laughs> Woo! I got a mini of the Pixie Glow Tonic because I, I've used this for years, but I probably wanna buy something else in its place. It's like better, but like I don't have the mental capacity to do that now. So I bought like a travel size version. La Roche Posay Sun Cream, 50 um, SPF. Oh my God, it's the best sun cream ever. It is the best. This is. Just the sound of that. <laughs> it's very strange. Uh <laughs> it's the best sun cream. I, I swear by it. So I picked up that and then I'd run out of serums and I didn't love the one I'd been using. So I picked up the Inky List, which is really affordable. Hyaluronic Acid Serum. So we'll give it a go. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard good things about Inky List for affordable price. Anyways, that's my haul. How exciting. Um, I am gonna go read Brom and I'll check in with you once I'm a little bit of a ways through it. I just got way too cozy in bed, so I'm not I'm not taking the hoodie off, okay? <laughs> I'm activating cozy mode. I'm 100 pages into Sleep It by Brom, and it's been a pretty easy, like, 100 pages. I was worried because the book is so tall, um, and, you know, it's like, there's quite a lot going on on a page that it would take me a long time to read it, but I'm reading it pretty quickly. Um, I'm obsessed. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. <laughs> no, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. I don't know how to sum up to you guys what I am experiencing right now. This is, this is a momentous occasion. Um, so the plot of this, we're following our girly, Abitha. Um, we're in Connecticut in 1666. She's in a town of Puritans. She's been shipped over from London by her dad. He sold her off. Um, and so she's married to this guy that he's, he's very kind. Um, but there's no like, you know, they're not in love. Um, and she's like very headstrong. She's gonna tell everyone her opinion and these people don't wanna hear her opinion. <laughs> I don't want to say much more than that. There's stuff in the synopsis that I think you shouldn't really know going into it. And then we're following also like this demon called Slewfoot, the devil, who knows, who's kind of like been awoken in the forest. And just, oh my gosh, guys, the vibes of this. I'm reading this on a cold October's evening. Oh my God. <gasps> I forgot how much I loved reading stuff that's witchy, that's this far back in history. I feel like a lot of the witchy stuff I read is either modern or like a lot of the histor historical stuff I read is Victorian, but I haven't read something this far back in history for like a long time and I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving it. I think I used to read a lot of witchy stuff set in this time period when I was younger and I just haven't in a long time. And so it feels nostalgic. The writing is so good. The writing is so good. I'm sorry, I was just checking how long I had left on my, <laughs> on my SD card. The writing's impeccable. Like I am just eating up every element of this. It is gory. Like there's some gory scenes to do with death and shit that I'm like, but it's giving me exactly what I want for like a witchy, devilly book set in this time period with the characters that are in it, the plot machinations that are happening. And I'm just excited for it to like, we're only at the beginning, you know, we're only in the first third. I'm really excited for it to kick off and just go crazy. You know what I mean? With like 
witchiness and crazy devilry and oh I don't even know like it's I'm so excited <laughs> this is Satan's work <laughs> I'm so excited I mean I knew I was gonna love this I'm just hoping I don't want to talk too soon I don't want to talk too soon I don't want to say it's gonna be a five star I don't want to say that you're not gonna hear those words come out of my mouth but am I thinking it possibly <laughs> I just don't want to speak too soon. But I'm really just loving it. To be honest, I don't want to talk to you. I just want to read this book. I don't want to say anything. I will check in with you I'm 200 pages in because it's just so good. It's so good. Hopefully I will get 200 pages in tonight. I've just woken up and I'm filming in a room I never usually film in <laughs> because um, there's people in every other room of the house. And yes, I could wait for them to move, but I don't want to because I want to carry on reading this book. So I am now 200 pages into Sleufet. I'm still loving it. Look, guys, also, <laughs> our bookshelf in here collapsed <laughs> the other day. And so we found this up. Look at baby Megan. Look at her. That's baby Megan. Anyways. <laughs> Girl. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Anyways, yeah, so Slutha, I'm still loving it. I can see why this is so highly rated, right? Such a highly rated horror because it's doing something different, right? I can't think of a book really like it that I have read. And for me, I feel like that's really what is determining what I give five stars nowadays. Like a five star has to have a innovative element to it nowadays for me. It has to be kind of like the first at doing something or is doing something in an interesting way. A solid murder mystery that just doesn't do anything new but is good is only gonna get a four star for me. Do you know what I mean? Like I really enjoy it but if it's not surprising me and like listen it doesn't have to be new to surprise me. For example like I if I had read Murder on the Orient Express for the first time today, I would still give that a five star, you know? But I'm feeling like this could be a five star. <laughs> There's something about the writing, I think the way it's written, like the writing style that feels very nostalgic. It's embodying the period so well because it feels like the way we used to tell stories. I love anything that plays with the art of storytelling. Um, Nevo's novellas do this a lot, I can think of. The, um, the ones with Cleric Chi, they kind of like, the whole series is about honouring the art of storytelling and the different ways the stories can be told. And I feel like there's something very nostalgic about the way that this is written. So yeah, I'm still loving it. I don't really have any other, many other thoughts for you right now. <laughs> I just want to go finish it really. So I will see you when I've finished it. But, but yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it and so glad that I'm finally getting around to reading it. I'm intrigued as to what's going to happen in these last hundred pages. I feel like it could go a bit crazy. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I kind of want it to go a bit crazy. I don't know. I want to be shocked in these last 100 pages. So guys, it's a five star. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Success. I loved it. I love the direction this went in. It kind of went in the direction that I was hoping that it would go in. And honestly, I always say I support women's rights and I support women's wrongs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will always be in defense of women's rights and women's wrongs. No. I don't believe in the glorification of murder. I do believe in the empowerment of women. No, I loved this and I can see why it is so highly rated. It's a very special, unique book. If you guys own this, this is a perfect time to read it. This is a perfect time to read it, like now, right this second. <laughs> It's the perfect time to read it. I'm so glad this was my like Halloween-y book around this time of year because I loved it. Also, it's a very quick read. I feel like when I looked up the audiobook, it was quite long, but actually physically reading this, I sped through it. Like my eyes were moving at the speed of light. <laughs> I couldn't stop reading it. So it's a very easily readable book. But like I said, I love the style that it was written in. I love the pagan versus Puritan kind of conflict that is happening throughout the book. I feel like the pacing was perfect. I feel like the plot flowed at the perfect pace. I loved it. I loved it. And I need to obviously read more Brom because I've never read anything by Brom. I've seen stuff before. I think there's like a Peter Pan retelling, I feel like, but um, I'm really intrigued in reading more stuff by Brom. Listen, the hype is legit <laughs> around this book. I got another five star. Yes, I know. It's like a momentous occasion. <laughs> And yeah, I can see why this is so highly rated. It deserves it. I don't feel like I have much more to say to you because I don't want to spoil anything. Like I kind of think this is a fun book to go into not really knowing anything, but I loved it. It was a five star. <laughs> So there we have it. That was my little experiment reading the lowest rated and highest rated horror on my TBR. Listen, I don't think Pine was bad. I gave it a 3.5, but I can see why it is a whole star rating lower than 
this majesty over here. Um, let me know what you thought of either of these books. If you've read them, if you got into the end, comment a ghosty emoji. And I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye!